makes those rainbows in my mind when I think of you sometime and I wanna spend some time with you. Just the two of us. Just the two of us, recording a podcast in my room, just the two of us, just the two of us. And I'm your co-host, DJ. And I'm your co-host, Evan. And this is the Review A New Podcast, and here we like to go through the films of our favorite filmmakers growing up and analyze their works as adults who are actually paying attention to what they're about and shit, but uh, you know, this year, this one came out... uh, very suddenly this year. Yeah. Very, <laughs> very timely. Very unexpected. Like, we had yeah, I had no idea. It was, like, we, a couple weeks ago yeah. that our other roommate was like, hey, you know there's Borat 2 coming out? Like, We're huh? like, what? <laughs> and there's, it's, yeah, Borat 2 just Borat just 2 is here, ladies and gentlemen. It. Was it Lemonade that Beyonce, like, yeah. Like, yeah it's like, <laughs> We're and on. Sasha Baron Cohen's Lemonade just appeared out of nowhere. It's like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like, um, yeah, we, cause we, we were just planning organically to do just Sasha Baron Cohen. We're like, oh yeah, that's the next guy yeah. we should talk about. And then it was just like, wait, what? Yeah, <laughs> what and, are the and odds? when we were doing Kevin Smith, he decided he was gonna yeah. do Clerks Three. I think, I think we're a good luck charm. Mm-hmm. Like any, any director who feels like they're kind of struggling and they, oh, yes. you know, they really want to have their big comeback, just give us a call. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's what we do. We revive careers yeah. uh, here. Uh, well, I mean, I guess not really in the case of the Kevin. No, so I remember, uh, he was. We, we give you the we, creative spark. Uh, we, we revived Borat, apparently. <laughs> we used our we'll powers t- for we'll good. We'll fully take the credit for that. <laughs> uh, and I, yeah, somebody posted. They were like, "The, the if if twenty twenty wasn't enough, now." We're going to end the year with people doing Borat voice again. <laughs> and boy, is there a lot of wah wah wee wah in this movie. Yes, I feel like he says wah wah wee wah yeah. so much more. Yeah, because I remember, like, in the first movie, it was usually when something sexual was happening. Like, yeah. it's like oh, someone was like, oh, wah wah wee wah. And now yeah. it's just like any sort of general yeah. excitement. Yeah, although it, that's occurring to me after the fact, and it didn't, like, grate on me while I was. Yeah, watching right? The movie. Like, it. Yeah. it, it, it it was fine that it was happening. I wasn't yeah. annoyed by it because right. there was so much other things happening there, that the fact that the catchphrases were there like wasn't detracting from the overall like there, how the comedy was kept hitting you. Yeah, you know? there was so much happening. Yeah, uh, oh my god. Wow, where do we start with this? I guess um, uh, the I guess just let's start from the beginning. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'll start by saying this is probably the most like legit documentary of 2020 <laughs> we've ever like i as i'm watching these like as you know we were wa- we watched it together uh, a couple of nights ago on, on amazon prime uh yeah yeah, yeah. That's, that's what it was on right yeah and like just watching this movie unfold to me it was just like every joke just felt like Sasha Baron Cohen was just like, yep, here's this ridiculous thing from the last presidency, and I'm going to stamp that reference right there. Here's this ridiculous thing, and I'm going to stamp that pre- reference right there. Like, it just hits you so much in such a, like, this is a contemporary film of our time sort of way. It just, like, the way it kept happening, like, and the way things would be revealed, like, uh, like, oh, he shot this during the time of the shutdown where no one's out, and that, and that, like, and he uses that as the plot device for, you know, hanging out with this person or that person. It's just yeah. such a, a, a like, lot of puzzle it, box, well put together sort of a, film. A lot of it was shot post, you know, like during the pandemic, yeah. like after the pandemic started. And I will say I spent so much time being worried about, <laughs> right. <watching> um, <laughs> about Sasha Baron Cohen and the actress playing his daughter. But, uh, but it looks like they, they did take a lot of precautions. There were times that you could see that something was green screen. Mm-hmm. Um, there were things that were shot in other countries where the pandemic's under much better control. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, I, I think he did uh, a reasonable amount to keep himself safe, although there were definitely some moments where uh, where there was some risky business happening. I, I mean, just risky business in general. Like, there's one point where he's wearing a bag on his head and almost gets hit by a freaking car. Yes, that, the driving. <laughs> oh, my God. This, this was somewhat the case in the first movie, too, but the driving in this just made me so nervous the yeah. whole time. Like, every time he was in the car, I was like, oh, my God. 
Oh my god. Yeah, it really pushes <laughs> up against like this is really happening. Way, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know. Anytime something involves like automobiles, like you, you ever watch like fail videos online and like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, in general, like skateboarding fails or whatever. But like I can't watch the car crash fails ones. It's like yeah. that's heavy machinery moving around, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah, um and it, that it like it never lost that spark of like the sort of I know this can't be true, but God damn it, you're just looking like, how did he do that shot? How did he do that shot? Like, it, you get that exact same feeling like you got with the first one. And he's and he, he, like, expands upon it and does even much more. Like, he really brings Borat to 2020 with uh, all these references. Like, this presidency has been so goddamn ridiculous to see it reflected back, yeah. like, through his comedy is just such a, like, such a, just like, wow, this... I, we really were living through a fucking Sasha Baron Cohen movie, yeah. weren't we? And, and it's weird. I mean, I do feel the need to point out, like, this movie is technically a work of fiction. Obviously, a lot of it oh, yeah. is scripted. A lot of it is plotted. There are, uh, the, the woman who plays his daughter is a 24-year-old actress. Yeah, it's about as realistic um, as a Michael Moore documentary. Right. Uh, and, you know, and there are things that look real that were somewhat manipulated and staged. And of we'll, course. We'll get to that yeah, later. For the purpose of the um, narrative, yeah. But... Nonetheless, this is very much, you know, reflecting the recent to current reality back at us in a way that, yeah, yeah. it was very... Like, the very first... <laughs> very startling. Yeah, the very first thing he did, like, as making reference to the jokes was talking about uh, um, how, you know, the worst president uh, of ever happened to America... Barack Obama, yeah. and then Trump came and made everything better. And then what did he say? Uh, with, with his super powered group of friends, and he mentions all of these people and shows all of these like very clearly like shady looking pictures that he's taken with these like super power super powered people and how he's you know uh, connected himself with people like what is it Bolsonaro and things like that. And then the last of the names that he mentions is and Kenneth West, and it's just like that sort of like smack your face. Oh, that wasn't a joke. That is so reality. Oh no! Like Kanye really is friends with like yeah. Trump, and that is a thing. Like that's not an exaggeration. He's doing like in the past, it would be like, oh, you know, oh, it, it wouldn't it be crazy if uh, Borat said that George Bush was hanging out with Ted Nugent or something like that? Yeah. And it's like, oh, but he actually is hanging yeah. out with the crazy dude Kanye West. Oh my God! Like you know what? It's that sort of pushing up against it. Like I'm not even making jokes. I'm just showing you how yeah, crazy real life is right there, now. There was I feel I'm getting deja vu like I might have mentioned this before but there was a novelist who wrote a political satire that came out in 2016 and it and it was not it was supposed to be this over the top political satire and it seems tame now <laughs> and compared and it's just like the shit going on right now is so ridiculous on so many levels that yeah, it's, it's so it's just, hard to can, satirize I mean, it. Yeah, you see so many things now where it's like, you know, the whole pose law thing where you can't tell the difference mm -hmm. between uh, genuine extremism and satire. And I feel like pose law has just gone absolute, absolutely wild now <laughs> because, you know, you could see somebody posting on Facebook that, you know, Trump has mind reading powers and is going to. Uh, save all the unborn babies by teleporting them into the uterus of an endangered elephant, and it's just like and I don't, I don't know. Maybe you really think that. Yeah, like know. if it's on Reddit, if it doesn't have that S slash next to it, I'm like, I, ooh, are they big? Are they yeah. big? Are they it's a thank, crazy thank shot here. God for whoever invented the slash S. <laughs> very important. So uh, I think I, I think I would want to start it with. Um, basically, I love how the movie subverts the narrative of. Uh, the Kazakhstani people being angry about the first Borat movie. I think yeah. we should start with that because literally it's like, it's kind of like they get their voice and being able to say, fuck you, Borat, you suck, you made us look bad. Yeah. You know, like I love that they get that off of the bat, right? Yeah. And uh, like, because there's one point where he's talking to his sons who his neighbor has like taken from him somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, it says uh, one of the guys whose name was, what was his name? Some sort of reference to like Boy George Huey or Lewis. something. Huey Lewis. Lewis. Yes, yeah, eighties or yeah, yeah, Huey Lewis. And he goes like, I would rather change my name uh, to uh, Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah. I was like, oh my fucking god. Yeah. Um and um 
So from that, we learned that he has a, a daughter that he, you know. Well, so we, we forgot to mention at the very beginning, oh, we right. find out Borat has been in a gulag for the last. Yes, yes. You see him turn years. around with really uh, bushy face and says, uh, that is me, Borat. And he makes some, like the opening joke where he references the not thing. Yeah, like, my life yeah. is very good, not. But it works so perfect as yeah. an opening line that you're just like, oh, here we go. And, um, <laughs> and he gets pulled out. And it's, it's interesting. So I, I just actually read, there was a piece on Slate um, where uh, the author actually had adopted a baby from Kazakhstan. And so he was talking about what Kazakhstan is actually like and the things that, you know, what it's actually like versus what it's depicted in Borat. Um, and it, it's not just Kazakhstan isn't as shitty as it's depicted in Borat. It's actually really different in a lot of ways, like the Kazakhstan depicted in Borat seems to be Eastern European because it's shot largely in Romania um, and, you know, Eastern European people are cast, but um, Kazakh people are descended from, uh, from Genghis Khan. They look Asian and it's actually a majority Muslim com country, which makes it really funny when you think back mm. to the first movie where somebody said he looks like a Muslim and he goes, no, I am Kazakh. I follow the hawk. <laughs> it's like, no, he actually probably would be, mm. uh, would be Muslim. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but you know, so it really is, it's not just, yeah. this is, we're making Kazakhstan look really shitty. It's really kind of an alternate reality. Oh, and like, they're not, particularly anti they actually have like almost no incidents of anti-semitism yeah. it's kind of like, it's like but like like in in the frame of how the movie is trying to frame itself it's like this is the reflection of what america thinks of the you know e right. Middle Eastern country. you know so, what I mean? so, like they don't know the difference and right. they, you know like so, yeah so bunny ears kazakhstan mm -hmm. is just every bit of a sort of stereotype of a soviet bloc country and the president uh, the presidential palace looks like this miserable, like, yeah. <laughs> it looks like some East German office building, and yeah. the president's office is, like, this horrible, really darkly lit, like, dark room. storeroom that looks like, you know, like, there, there's just, like, boxes piled up, and, um, and he, he just looks like, you know, some terrible warehouse delivery manager. <laughs> like, he straight up just looks um, like a delivery manager in a yeah. warehouse. And, um, <laughs> and so the president pulls Borat out of the gulag and says, okay, I've got a mission for you. Uh, here's how you're going to make us look better. Mm. You're going to get Trump to be friends with me by delivering a gift to uh to mike pence because he can't get close to trump but he can get to mike pence mm -hmm. um and you're gonna bring him this chimp they kept saying a monkey it was, yeah. i think oh, oh he specifically can't get close to trump because he took a shit <laughs> in front of his right, hotel in because, the first movie right, i they, love it they had the clip back to him <laughs> in front of trump tower um <laughs> and so they're gonna send him this <laughs> chimp who is an astronaut and a porn star and also i think the minister of finance something like that <laughs> <laughs> uh and and um, so they, they pack Borat off, and he, he gets... Oh, but before he leaves, yes, you were mentioning... He, he, met, he meets his he, daughter. He goes back to his hometown, and, and Lunell is not in the movie. Apparently, mm -hmm. she was not sure if she was going to be in the movie or not. She posted on Instagram that she got paid for it just in case, because oh, it, it was like a union thing. Okay. Um, but she she isn't in the film. I, you know, there's not really much about what happened. I mean, they do um, have a nice black woman substitute yeah, in well, the, the film who's they, awesome. They lampshaded that really yes. well. But, so, um, but, so, we'll get to it. So Borat <laughs> finds out that he has a daughter he didn't know about. She's 15. Mm -hmm. So presumably this daughter was born to the wife who was killed by a bear in the first right. Borat yeah. movie <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> while he was in America. Um, and so she is you know, out back in a shed, chained up in the grass. Yeah, watching TV. Watching, right. And, oh, and my Lord. Filthy. This is how I knew this was going to be a and really good movie. She's watching this. It looks like Cinderella. It looks like Disney Cinderella. Yes. It looks like a princess, like a Disney princess movie. But it's about Melania. Yes. It's about Melania Trump, and it's about, like, how at the ball, uh, President Trump saw her, and it, like, shows him getting an erection. Yes. But... It's so well done. Like the art, yes. it looks like Trump. It looks like Melania. It looks like a Disney movie. And it like, looks like a Disney movie. It's really well done. Yeah, and, it's it's a sort of like the dedication to the bit, you know. Yeah, and the and the narration, which is in English, you know, a little bit of a, a 
you know, fourth wall, but yeah. whatever. Uh, the the narration is talking about how you know Princess Melania won the heart of pres of, of Fat President Trump, and <laughs> and they kept using the word turgid to describe his penis. Yeah, oh god, um, turgid. And so she is uh, the daughter Tutar is you know her greatest dream is to be like Melania. Mm, she wants to be a uh, Disney and, princess and, and have she, all that. And yeah. you know she's just sitting there, just absolutely like looking like a feral child. <laughs> um, and Borat comes in and he's like, "What's going on?" And she's. She says she's 15. He says, you're the oldest unmarried woman in Kazakhstan. And <laughs> she looks over at a peer who is somewhat cleaner and in a nicer cage and, like, flipping her off. <laughs> um, so, and and he responds very negatively. He does not want to have anything to yeah, do with and, his daughter. And she, now, she wants to come to America because she's, you know, seeing the really nice, you Right. Know. She she asks him to take her to America with him, and, she, and he says no, and he... And he leaves. Yeah. And as he's um, leaving... It's, uh, it's a nice subversion of the send-off in the first one. Yeah, everyone's shouting at him. One woman says, Be gone, may all your shits have antlers. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It took me a second to give. I was like, wait, why would they have... Oh, yeah. <laughs> they have for the sole purpose of punishing you yeah. while you shit. In, yes, it's, just the, it's <laughs> the exact opposite. Everybody's good riddance, rid never come back. Yeah. So he gets to America... Um, after taking a steamer ship that just goes all over, yeah, all, all over out of the, the way, because he, he's not getting a good, you know, ticket. He has to take this. Yeah, yeah. He yeah, gets to travel. America. He's delivered a crate with the chimp in it. Um, mm, and then there's a guy who who helps him and uh, a guy get it who out. Him open the crate. Yeah, and you know, it looks like he, he, this guy doesn't know what's going right. on. So. And, and the crate opens, and Tutar pops out mm -hmm. and has some blood on her face. Yes. And he looks in. And the chimp, oh the half-eaten yes. corpse of the yes. chimp, oh is in the crate with her, and um, and she says, he asks if she ate the monkey, and she says, no, he ate himself. He ate himself, <laughs> even though there's a freaking head left. Somehow he ate himself. <laughs> uh, and I just love seeing like the reaction of the dude because you know he goes, uh, you know he sees that she's there, and he goes, oh no, put the thing back on, put it back on. Right, and, and so he's asking the guy like, okay. oh okay, and, <laughs> so he starts yeah. nailing it back down. It's like, oh my Jesus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, it's uh, another one of those just like just fucking with a person moments, but using the plot to do that yeah. in the same way that have you seen that movie yet? Um, the movie with Eric Andre. I think uh, I told you about no, it I this haven't. year. Uh, it's like hard driver, slow driver, something like that. Yeah, just ha like the breaking reality of like, oh, the plot is this, but like if someone did this in a plot in an actual movie, people around him wouldn't react in that realistic yeah. way. Like I love that sort of yeah. shit, you know. Then we get to the scene where he's he's trying to do something, but everyone's recognizing him. Oh, right. We it's such yeah. a great moment, and it's it's great. It is again using the real world mm -hmm. because everybody recognizes Bora, and yeah, so everyone he's, would he's, recognize him in real he's life. Running around like and trying to disguise himself, and everybody's coming up to him, Bora, Bora. Yeah, doing yeah, the joke like, yeah, yeah, yeah and, um, <laughs> and, say yeah, say what we want. <laughs> so he goes to disguise himself. He goes into like a spirit of halloween type yes type costume shop and so you know how those halloween stores they always have like they'll have shaggy from scooby-doo but it says beatnik or right like, right they'll have jack sparrow and it just says pirate um and they have a borat costume that just says stupid foreign reporter <laughs> and, and, and like the, wow you couldn't have written that joke better <laughs> Yeah, and you like, couldn't oh. have written that moment and better. Apparently, uh, I read. Apparently, the costume shop guy didn't recognize him and didn't yeah. know who he was. And so he was just like, great. "Oh, that kind of looks like you." And he's like, "No, it doesn't." And I love it. Goes like, "No, that looks like you." Like the way he's he, he kind of looks like he's just like, "Dude, don't be stupid." That like, like is it like totally? He doesn't realize. He's just like, "Do you not realize that you are a guy in this world who looks like this person?" Like yeah. it's such a genuinely wonderfully played moment because like in a movie you would want that dialogue to be there and the fact that he actually responds that way. It's like, this movie just came together so perfectly. Like, just every moment just feels like, holy shit, how does he keep getting these things? Like, how yeah. does he keep capturing this shit? And he, um, and he buys a lot of costume pieces, although I suspect that uh, a lot of his costumes were not from... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not from the Halloween show. A little bit, little bit more high quality. But so he has these great disguises. Uh, he uses a fat suit yes. and, and this, like, big bushy wig and this big beard and really is unrecognizable. Mm. Um and uh, uh, and he has like this long long gray hair that he wears a lot and just yeah really fantastic. So he uh, 
is messing with this guy at this computer store. <laughs> try, you know, he messes with multiple guys at computer store. Because right. the first one is him it's, figuring out what. To send a fax. He's trying to send No, no, no. A... That's not the first one. The first one is him trying to figure oh, out phones. Oh, when he's buying he a smartphone. Know, yeah, because he doesn't he know what they are yet. Because he says, everyone's walking around with calculators. Why does everyone like calculators all of a sudden? And yeah. so, yeah, he gets debriefed on, like, what they are. Yeah. And th- so, yeah, in a great scene where... Uh, so they're at the computer store, and you can see his screen, like, that's on his phone on yeah. the actual big computer. And, you know, the guy's talking to him, trying to figure out how to do it. And he says, like, oh, what if I want to uh, go to a restaurant? I want to get a uh, roast chicken maybe later and some dessert. I'll look up a... Uh, Spit uh, roasting cream pie. <laughs> <laughs> like, what fucking know what he's doing? And so it comes up on a porn thing, and he's like, oh, well, that's, uh, that's porn. He's like, oh, that's just here? That's what I need to... Okay, I, 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 we can figure this out later. I'll go to the bathroom. And then you just see, you know, he didn't take you off see, the screen thing. And it says, tall white man with big black lady. Yeah, big African woman. Big, white. Big African, <laughs> yeah, that's it. It says, big African woman with tall white man. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Yeah. Uh, and then it goes to the computer scene where he's trying to fax. He's faxing back uh, mm-hmm. people from, you know, from his home the, country. From the, the president. And now, Virginia, this one, yeah. I was trying to figure out, I was like, yeah, are faxes still a thing? Like, who you, needs this? <laughs> I I don't know why, but faxes are still a thing. As having being a parent and having to deal with like medical records, which mm. for some reason always have to be faxed. Uh-huh. It's yeah, it's really irritating. So yeah, it was just funny to see like you know the joke being like, oh Borat's behind on his technology, and then here's the scene where it's just like, what. Does anyone still use this anymore? Why is this, like, this anachronistic thing that is still here by arbitration of, like, there are certain needs for it. But, like, it's yeah. just so funny to see it, like, who, <laughs> you know, it's so ridiculous. He's sending back these, sending back and forth these uh, communications. He gets a he gets a picture of a dick at first, and then, <laughs> sorry, wrong person. I meant to send that to and my then, sister. Yes, yeah, yeah. And so, so he tells him, like, what would you like to fax? And he says, sup. And I was yeah. like, like yeah. at first, you're at like, first you I thought, I at first I thought it was an acronym or something. Yeah. And then, he's like, no, S U P. What's up? Yeah. And the, <laughs> I was like, oh my god. And the premier sends him back an entire page of angry faces. <laughs> well, first he sends him back sup question mark. Yeah. <laughs> like he sends him back that, and then he says, he says, tell him chilling. Yeah. <laughs> like so, literally, it just like like a text exchange. He, what's up? What's up? Oh, chilling. Because he did remember some American slang. <laughs> right, from right. Trip. Yes, like yes. Fourteen years in the gulag. <laughs> and so, yeah, yeah. He has to tell him that like all oh, the monkey mission fucked up. So he sends him the, the the paper full of angry faces and says like you know you will make this right or we'll kill you. Right. And then so he's <laughs> thinking about it. And oh, and he happens to uh, catch a little bit of TV. Right, right, yeah, the TV is, uh, is a convenient device there. And uh, it's talking about Mike Pence, right? Yo, oh, did you see the specific clip that I was playing remember. at that moment? It remember. was Trump with Jeffrey Epstein oh, saying, oh, yeah, doesn't right. that chick look hot or something like right. that, you know? <laughs> right, and then, and then he says, but then he's talking about Mike Pence, and he says, he's such a pussy hound, he can't be left alone with a woman. <laughs> yes! <laughs> uh, and again, it's like, this is so incredibly wild that, like, this is a thing that a vice president has actually said that, oh, I can't be left alone with another woman because, you know, uh, you, you, the, the male urges just might take over. You know, like, all the implied bullshit. Yeah. Like, the poisonous fucking, uh, what do you the toxic masculinity that people like this, of this stature, try to talk around. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, oh, well, it's just dignified to not be around anyone it's in like, a room that's not your wife. Like, just, <laughs> just say what you mean. You are literally worried you're going to sexually <laughs> assault someone. Exactly. You control yourself. Yeah. Um, so then his daughter pops up, and we have to talk about this actress for a second. Mm. This is a 24-year-old Bul- Bulgarian woman who they just found. She's like a new... I, I mean, could have I think she was from something. She No, she does have an acting degree. I think she went to acting school, but she hasn't really been in anything. She's fantastic. She is yeah, so funny. Yeah, she's a funny. great foil for, for she's him. She's so so funny. And she, like, and she clean, like, she is adapts to different scenes perfectly with what she's mm-hmm. doing. Because first she's the feral child, right. and then she kind of becomes she, the pretty looking. It's amazing. She uglies up so well, and she also cleans up so well. Yeah. So, at this beginning part, she's like, 
really just like looks awful. Like she's, she's like blood she's, stains on her face. She's got face. blood stains on her face. <laughs> she's got like the unibrow. And yeah, she's of dirty and her hair looks like a bird's nest. L- looks like the chick from. It looks like Yolandi Visser from freaking uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Ninja yeah. Room, yeah. And uh, <laughs> the dear word, yeah. And she. Um, and she's like pressed up against the glass, like with her, like doing the pig nose <laughs> on the glass, the nose, and, like, yeah. and um, and he gets the idea that he is going to give his fifteen-year-old daughter as a gift to Mike Pence, and then we get the pretty woman sequence. Mm-hmm. Oh so, my god! So wh- he goes to the Instagram influencer, right? Right, uh, and she and this this girl, she's so, she's sitting hunched forward, like literally in this almost like monkey posture with her entire like her forearms entirely on the couch next to her legs mm. and just this like like absolute shitting grin now the the influencer later said she was like i knew this was an actress i didn't know what she was doing it seems but, like that you know. yeah yeah but yeah this girl who is a, apparently an instagram influencer and a sugar baby is giving her advice on how to marry a rich old man yeah, and now the way I look at it is, is, is like, you know, they say like, yes, like, oh, I knew that wasn't real, I knew that this was real, but it's just like, I don't think about it in terms, of, like, when I'm watching the movie, I think of like, they did a good job at getting the plot that they wanted out of this person through yeah. what they use. Like, that's how I think about it. You know, yeah. I don't think it's like, oh, this person's actually really awful. I think it's just like, no, they just coaxed the right dialogue they right. got out of them to make the scene work. You know what I'm and saying? And she's saying, you know, she very much has this desire to be you know to to marry well yeah and there was a, there was a great moment where oh sorry the, oh no, no no go ahead well go i was ahead. saying there was just that great moment where she goes like i was like oh well, what I are you looking for a beer bottle with my small hole uh, no no oh, <laughs> she opens a beer bottle with her small hole on camera <laughs> no okay. i was thinking about the part where she said uh he said like well what type of guy are you looking for i was like i'm looking for someone who is like very old very old, and she's like, and she, she responds, nearly dead. Yeah, nearly dead. And he's like, well, get someone who's had a heart attack already. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> that was just such a good moment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just kind of awkward, you know, hearing her saying like, like before you could tell she really got what was going on. Like her setup was that she's saying like, you know, these things that are kind of like saying like, hey, you have to be kind of weak. You have to, you know, already mm-hmm. sort of, you know, portray yourself as a weaker person and da da da. This stuff is just sort of like. Oh, no, this is kind of awkward. I mean, you it's know? weird. Like, sugaring kind of straddles a right. line where it is sex work, but it's also But a there's a consensual thing that they you know? want to do. And yeah. because it is basically sex work, you know, saying, like, okay, here's this performance that you're putting mm. on. I don't think there's anything really wrong with that. I get what you're saying. Um, but, yeah, just in the context of the plot of the movie, we're looking at this 15-year-old girl learning how to become a trophy wife. Right. In in the context of she is already this person who's been chained up, like, treated like a subordinate person, mm-hmm. and then, like, here's oh, this they, person telling you how to... Did we mention yeah. the cage? Did, have they bought the cage Oh, my yet? God. <laughs> they, they go to a farm and feed store yes. and buy a cage for her, and the, and the farmer's just completely blase about like, it. Like, he's just like... Oh, for her? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, how many how many people can fit in here? Uh, uh, but we, we get a makeover sequence. She gets her hair done. She gets makeup done. She tries to eat lipstick. Yeah, th- uh, there's one scene where he where they go to they're going to buy uh, clothing, and she says like, "Wait, these women own this business." It's like, "Could I own a business?" And he's like, "No, you can't oh, own a business." Uh, yeah, that is where we we start to get the um the first mm-hmm. like little foreshadowing of two tars uh two tars emancipation where she <laughs> right. realizes that the clothing store is owned by a woman. Borat to the emancipation of two tar. That's what <laughs> this movie is. Uh, because yeah, yeah, but the, he makes a joke to try to like sidestep it because he goes like. Uh, he says, no, women can't own a business. It's too much for their heads. Their heads will explode. Man- and and yeah. it shows the mannequins with their heads. Like, you know, those mannequins yeah. without the heads. And yeah. he points to that. It's like, oh, those were the previous owners and the heads exploded. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I realized something as as I was re-watching it. Like, wow. So, you know, we brought up Kevin Smith. Like, this is the daddy-daughter evolution of gross-out comedy that Jay and Silent Bob reboot wanted to do, yes. but done well. You know what I mean? And I think, and also, I, I do think maybe part of it working, I mean, partly just because Sasha Baron Cohen is, you know, doing really good work still. Mm-hmm. Um, that was <laughs> shadier than I meant it to be. But I have hopes for Clerks 3. But, um, you know, but part of it is that that's not his daughter. That's an yes. actress. 
And, you know, I think that if he were trying to work with his actual teenage daughter, um, he wouldn't have been able to do that yeah. because, you know, you, you have, as a parent, you have protectiveness towards your kid. And you just and, have certain eyes where you're like, you're not seeing where, like, you see them as beautiful and awesome and you're not. Right. Yeah. And you're, you're, you're going to be able to look at another person more objectively. And also, you know, like he does things with her for comedy that if that were his actual daughter would have been really creepy. Right. Like the, so, well, I mean, we're going to get into a certain scene. <laughs> yeah. So, well, the, they go to a bakery and this seems like, and she is already really prettied up, I think at this point. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So she looks gorgeous at this point. She's gotten her hair. No longer looks like a bird's nest and she's wearing makeup and she's cleaner. Um, and they go to this bakery, and this was just horrifying. This was, I think, somewhere in Georgia or South Carolina. Yeah. And he's like, okay. And I this think it might have been where the people couldn't get, the, the gay couple couldn't get their cake. Uh, oh, okay. That was, I think that was what he was oh, referencing. You know what that saying? adds a yeah. whole dimension. <laughs> exactly. That adds a whole dimension <laughs> then because, so we've established then, this is a place where they say, hey, if we don't believe in something, we don't have to make that cake. Yeah, exactly. Oh, my God, that adds a whole other dimension because yeah. – he says, okay, we're going to get a cake as a present to send the premiere. And he says, put on the cake. Jews will not replace us. And she just, and mm -hmm. she just does it with a <laughs> smile. Like, yep. And she puts the little smiley faces. And she's just like, okay, so here you go. And no, no. Uh, no not, pushback not whatsoever. Moment, not even like a second, huh? <laughs> not a moment's hesitation. And it's like, okay, so, uh, so that's not offensive to you, but a gay wedding cake is. Yeah. Like, that okay. goes against. And, um. And then this is more of a plot bit where uh, Tutara wants a cupcake and she sees these cupcakes that have a little baby on them, presumably you know, oh, yes. for a baby shower. So we've got a little plastic baby. And he says, no, 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 you can't have a treat. Uh, you know, daughters aren't allowed to have sugar or something because we've established, you know, daughters are these fourth class citizens. Right. Um, but she she clings to his leg sitting on the floor and goes, give it to me, daddy, please, daddy, <laughs> give it to me. He straight up <laughs> sounds like Yolandi Visser. <laughs> like, at yeah, that moment. it is. Uh, so he agrees. He, <laughs> From the end. He gets the, uh, he gets the cupcake with the baby and then says, okay, well, we have to do it where no one can see. Takes her behind mm -hmm. a dumpster and she's like, you know, stuffing the cupcake in her mouth right. and then swallows the baby. Uh, and so, <laughs> they go to one of these crisis pregnancy centers. Mm -hmm. Now, I will say, I, I fucking, I have such a huge fucking problem with these things. Uh, that's an understatement. Crisis pregnancy centers, for anybody who doesn't know, are fake clinics. Um, they offer no actual medical services, social yeah, I, services, Because I'm looking nothing. in that room, I was just like, um... They don't... <laughs> all these things are, and there's one There's one near where we used to live, and I would just, like, flip it off every time I walked by. But all these things are, they, they solely exist to bully girls out of getting abortions. Yeah. That is all they exist for, because... So imagine you're, like, a 16-year-old girl... And you're pregnant and you're broke and you don't have, you know, support and you don't know what you're going to do and you don't have good health care, whatever. And you go to one of these things thinking maybe they can help me. Like, I don't want to have an abortion. I want to have this baby. But, like, I need to know how I'm going to go to the doctor. I need to get vitamins. I need to get healthy food. I need to know how I'm going to take care of this baby. I need somebody to help me hook me up with resources. So if you're saying you want to prevent abortion, maybe you could, like, actually help people with those things but no literally all that happens when you go in there is they go that's a baby that has a heartbeat and if you have if you have an abortion you're committing murder you're a bad and, person and that's yeah. literally all they do but they wear lab coats and mm. they try to look like the, they have ultrasounds that the only reason they have the ultrasound <clears throat> is to show it to the girl and be like that's a baby yeah but they don't actually serve any kind of medical purpose. Because, like I said, yeah, like as I'm looking around the room, I was like, I don't see any medical equipment. Yeah, they or do, anything. It, there's there's nothing. There is no actual use or service to these places, and yet they prevent they present themselves as such, and they give misinformation. They lie. Yep. So yeah, these places are. It makes me so angry that they are even allowed to operate. But um, but yeah. So he takes. Tutar to one of these, and she sits down with a a pastor. He's a pastor, mm. this guy, not a doctor in any of any kind. He's a pastor, and 
the dialogue here is so fucking oh funny because we know exactly what happened yes. that she swallowed a little plastic baby from a cupcake but what she says is I have a baby inside me and it's hurting me and I want you to take it oh, out. Yes. And he's like, no, 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 we can't do that because that's a life. And Borat's going, are you sure? I don't think that is. Uh, and, <laughs> um, and then it comes out that <coughs> my my Tati put the baby inside of me. Oh I just God. wanted to give her a treat, but we did it behind the dumpster <laughs> where no one could see. And it's just absolutely horrifying. So this pastor is sitting here, you know, being given every reason to think that this right. woman is this this girl this 15 year old girl is pregnant by her father and he's just going well that doesn't matter now the only yeah. thing that matters oh is that the way these people sidestep shit like because uh, i wrote this down. i wanted to write down what they said like basically the idea of like yeah let the fetus uh live no matter what ha what has to be confronted by its limits right like it's just like he keeps going, um, you know, I don't need to hear anymore. He's just refusing to grapple it. And then finally goes like, we're at this moment and we have to deal with the preservation of life, like amongst all things. And not the clearly abusive relationship you're basically helping doom well, her and, to and as you, you watch it. And you know what is really disgusting too is even if, and I fundamentally disagree with this. I think that wanting an abortion is sufficient reason to get an abortion. Mm -hmm. Nobody should be forced to be pregnant when they don't want to be. However... Even if your moral belief is that a fetus is every bit as much a human life as a baby and that abortion is murder and it's never okay and even in a case of rape or incest that fetus should not be killed, even if that is your moral position, there is no reason to sit there looking at a girl that you think was just raped by her father right. and ignoring that instead of saying, right. all right, you need to get out of the room. I'm going to stay with her. I'm going right. to call the cops. Right. I'm going to, you know, do something. Like, there, you know, even if your belief is you need to not have an abortion no matter what, that doesn't mean that you need to sit there and play nice with a guy you think raped his daughter. Yeah, exactly. Like, he's, get, like, and the way they're setting up the scene is giving them all the, like, the context like using certain words but if you didn't just see the scene that had happened you would think that oh he's talking about actually putting a baby inside of her right it's that sort of thing right and like so giving you only the wording that would allow you to think of it in the worst terms of what that mm -hmm. would look like and him still going no because it has already happened and we have to deal with the you know and the... not and not reacting to that at all or trying to help her in any way yeah exactly it's, it's... that assumption that no you have to deal you this is yours to bear now you and know it's, and it's that same thing of if you if you really are saying we don't want girls to have abortions we want to help them not have abortions are you going to help them? Are you going to connect them with Wick? Are you going to teach right. them? You know, are you going to like help help them find a, a midwife? Like, what are you going to do to actually help them? Mm. And in this case, like, okay, you don't want her to have an abortion, but are you going to help her get away from her father who's raping her? Mm -hmm. As far as you know, like, you know, it's it's just absolutely disgusting. Yeah, so, like you see what they actually care yeah. about. <laughs> so the hypocrisy of both the bakery and the crisis pregnancy center are. Uh, are exposed yeah. in quite a satisfying way and um and somewhere in there we learn that tutar has this book that is like the it's about how to care for daughters and then yeah. it includes oh yes it includes instructions for her father with like these almost medieval wood cutting looking in mm -hmm. illustrations but then also like kids book illustrations yeah, and yeah. stories in there um and when when does she go to the babysitter? That happens. Uh, that happens after, after the because what happens first is uh, they go to the um, the debutante ball thing, right? And I, yeah, they they take oh a real quick note because this is like a weird, sweet, gross moment that she poops out the plastic baby, keeps it, and dresses it up like her father. Yes. Um, <laughs> it becomes a plot point. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so so she attends a debutante ball, and um, and it's there are cutaways to uh, Borat in disguise having a conversation with an etiquette teacher, mm -hmm. um, and he mentions that his daughter's on her period, and says, is that going to be a problem? And the etiquette teacher says, no, no, no. You know, oh, I came. didn't know. It. I forgot that line. <laughs> so they're at the ball. She looks beautiful. She's wearing this 
this yellow dress. Yeah, like and, looks like out of uh, Beauty and the Beast, you know what right, I mean? Right, and he's kind of like dignified looking in a suit and he's got this big beard and, you know, this disguise on. And they start dancing together because they have the daddy-daughter dances and most of it is creepy slow dancing. Mm -hmm. But when Borat and Tutar start to dance oh together, they're doing this really cool folk dance and everybody's kind of smiling and clapping at first and they're doing this really neat thing and then she starts uh hiking her hiking skirt up, the up skirt, yeah and then flashes just <sighs> well you see that she has recently cut her hair I, oh, oh no see that's what i thought no. i thought that see they referenced her having hair around her vagina so i thought that she had cut her hair and it was bleeding out that's what i thought what was happening no that's her she's on her period. okay so, so yeah so at first you just start to see little blood and it just becomes more yeah, and more so as she's she, dancing she, around she flashes her she's wearing like white granny panties with her bush coming out through the leg holes and it's blood soaked oh, and then she's just dancing more and more with her skirt up St starts doing russian and then, kicks and shit right and then it <laughs> ends with her on her back on the floor with her legs up and spread and borat standing over her gesturing towards her crotch oh my God. and everybody um but I, you know, this is this is the culmination of a debutante ball where Borat was going around asking all these men like, "How much would you pay for my daughter?" And mm. one guy says, five hundred dollars." Yeah, and like, this teenage girl sitting next to him goes, "That's fucking disgusting." I think that was his, probably like his granddaughter or some shit. Yeah, I think, yeah, just like <laughs> like he seemed like he was being a creepy old ass man, you know, letting yeah. letting it fly the, fast the and loose with the jokes. That, and she was just, just like, "Hey." This teenage girl just goes, "That's." Fucking disgusting. Yeah. I was like, okay, the kids are okay. Yeah, the right. The kids are okay. <laughs> they just have to deal with this, yeah. all right? <laughs> you know? Um, um, but they leave the debutante ball, and it was clearly a failure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, I, I love it. He got them announced as Mr. Philip Drummond III. I, I, I noticed that. Uh, you, you know what that's a reference to, right? Uh -uh. <laughs> a fun, what was that 80s TV show where uh, Different Strokes where he adopts oh, the two black okay. kids? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, then after that is the scene where he he tries to uh, meet Pence. Yeah, this happens earlier in the movie than right, I thought it was going to happen. Yeah, the plastic surgery happens after they try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because they go to uh, Pence's speaking at this Republican convention. Yeah, at the Gaylord. At the Gaylord uh, where we've both been to con, <laughs> so that was funny. So I was just watching as he runs like through the lobby in, and I was like, oh my in God. In a KKK yes! robe. And he says, excuse me, I'm Stephen Miller. I need to get to the... <laughs> Um, I was like, oh my god, that's too but good. But he, he disguises himself as Trump in a fairly realistic rubber Trump mask. Yeah, oh, it was creepy. Flings Tati over his shoulder and basically runs in saying, you know, to Pence, that I've got, you know, I've got this gift for you. And Pence looks like he's going to fucking, face, like, angry. Spitting daggers, yeah. like he looks like he if looks could kill. Yeah, um, and and what I love about it, but what I love about it though is is like. Your boy is a fucking perverted sex, sexual assaulting dude. So, like, why are you even looking at Like, how dare you point that out? Like, you yeah. know, what? like, it's I not mean, like Trump isn't that, you know? That's, like, that's what that, that's exactly it. How dare yeah, you? I guess that's what he's really mad about. Yeah. It's just like, fuck you for bringing that up. Yeah. Because, like, because guys like Pins try to, like, we are the dignified, and sure, mm -hmm. we have to work with the buffoon, but, like, we're still, we still have our yeah. thing that we need to do, and he's allowing yeah. us to do that. I, so I, like, I, but it's like, no, if you care so much about dignity and all this shit, you shouldn't be standing for that asshole you know yeah, like, pence wishes he were george hw Bush, bush's vice president right he right is not and um what is it oh yeah so and i caught wind of what he was saying uh because this was beat like way a couple of months ago this is probably in like february when this part was recorded and you hear pence saying there's only been 15 cases with only one new one over the past two weeks so yeah, everything's going so great it's that it's little like, oh, wow it's that, it's that like and i always want and i always want to be like okay like, it's these things where I feel like, it, where it's just like, you know, like, I'm sorry, but like, conservatives, like, they're always wrong. All you have to do is give it some time, and they are wrong about things. And it's like, this is well, something where they were so demonstrably wrong about because they were trying to play it down. And it's just right, like, because, you know, anybody can be wrong about things, anybody can make mistakes, but they knew. Yeah, they specifically they were knew. playing it down, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, uh, and then we get the scene with the, the black woman who doesn't put right, up with the bullshit. Well, right, so, okay, <laughs> so basically... The thing with Pence fails, they're thrown out, Borat's getting ready to go back and be executed, and I think it's Tutar has the idea 
uh, where they're looking together, but they, they figure out the idea that she instead is going to be given as a gift to Rudy Giuliani. Oh, yeah. And in order There's to, another scene where they go back right. to the copy. And, and, and in order to make herself more uh, appealing to Rudy Giuliani, they go to get her a ton of plastic surgery. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, you know, obviously horrifying, as you would expect. Uh, but during the day... While Borat is trying to, you know, finish getting the money together, right, right, uh, by giving this random guy a haircut, and the guy's weirdly, I was trying to figure out like what that, does this scene have to do with that, anything? That was just funny. Like, yeah, like Borat, and he kept sniffing the. Borat <laughs> decides he's going to get the money by becoming a barber, and he's got like these huge, terrifying, rusty, yeah. like oh sheep God. shearing shears. Why would you even want still want a haircut after dude, you saw that? I mean, I think that guy must have been like, you know, told what was going on, but he's just yeah. sitting there like cool as a cucumber getting his hair snipped and Borat's like snipping a little of his hair and showing it to him and he like, goes that's alright and he snips his hair shows it to him that's alright <laughs> and, it, and then oh my god this will take it, forever it was it was really funny but so during the day um, Tutar is left with a babysitter mm-hmm. um, who uh, is basically I and you know I'm curious how much this woman knew because there are scenes that are just Tutar and the babysitter in the car, um, mm. and it doesn't seem like it. So yeah. I feel like she must have like. I feel like she must have been given something. Maybe like on a certain level, it yeah. was like yeah. Um, but so she, this woman, you know, like is, you could easily tell. Like I thought, I think about like reality shows and how all the time. Yeah, they're able to it's like it's like a little bit. You know? like, but yeah. so this woman is reacting as any decent person would to the situation with Tutar of telling her. You know, you you are 15 years old. Like, first of all, touching your vagina will not result in you being swallowed whole by (laughs) your own vagina. Well, well, the initial uh, uh, way we're introduced is like, you know, he walks in and he's clicking this dog thing. He's clicking a dog clicker. Yeah, to be like, all right, she she sits over here. He has her chained to a kettlebell. (laughs) Um, And so already this black woman's just like, um... What's happening now? Right, she's just you know she's like reacting as you would, and um and then Tutar's like read me my favorite story, and it's yeah. the story about a little girl who touches her vagine and then she gets swallowed she gets- whole by her vagine. <laughs> yes, oh my god! Um, and you know, and this woman tells Tutar like you. Uh, it can be anything you want to be. You can drive a car. Yeah, it's okay for you, you to can, touch your vagine. You, you can, <laughs> you know, like you should not be trying to get plastic surgery and marry an old man when you're 15 years old. Yeah, um, and, and it is such a sweet moment it's as it's really, happening. Like, it's really sweet, and you just want her, like this woman to adopt Tutar. Right? <laughs> um, but so Tutar uh, has this, like, you know, awakening. She, she's talking to the babysitter, and the babysitter is sort of planting these ideas in her head. And Tutar. Uh, is about to walk into the plastic surgery clinic to get a boob job and a rhinoplasty, which is completely unnecessary, mm. uh, and all this stuff. And she... Um, she sees another woman driving a car. She sees another woman driving, and she's like, oh, a woman driving, and she follows that woman into a hotel where it's a Republican women's convention. Yes, good lord. And, and it was funny because it's like, on the one hand, these women are Republicans and conservative, but on the other hand... You know, they're women trying, it's a group of women trying to organize their political, Mm. you know, thing. Mm. And so (laughs) it's like. Oh, oh, let me give you a quote. Let me give you a quote from (laughs) this fucking thing. Because specifically, what is it? The woman says, uh, because like you said, like, yeah, these women, you know, trying to like use their Mm -hmm. power or whatever. And then like you listen to what they're saying. And the quote that that she, that the woman says who's up there before uh, Tudor comes in is, is like, women are having children out of wetlock and this is a oh, horrible yeah. thing, and I think it's because of the decline of Christianity. Oh yeah, yeah. And I, was like, I mean, it's, wow. it's awful. <laughs> but I think I and I and I think specifically like this is, was a really good group to do this. Oh, with absolutely. Because this is if, perfect. You know, because they're conservative, so you know they're gonna be shocked, and they're also going to try to be polite. Yes. And they're going, and also because you know it is a group of women, and theoretically, like. These are women exercising their power. And so Tutar is, like, just thrilled, and she's introduced. And all these women are, like, you know, 40 and up. And so they're very excited to see a young woman. And they're like, yes, yes, we're so glad you're Mm -hmm. here. Um, And she excuses herself to the bathroom and touches her vagine. And I think, you know... It's. I like that Sasha Baron Cohen has this motif in his films masturbation. of <laughs> masturbation as like a great moment of awakening. <laughs> the awakening moment. <laughs> so it's all right. Much like, uh, much like, 
uh, the dictator, uh, Tutar has this moment of masturbating and realizing her own power. And she comes out and she says, women, did you know that you can touch your cunt and you won't be swallowed? There are no teeth. Yeah. And she's like describing exactly how to masturbate. Mm -hmm. And all these like middle-aged Republican white ladies are sitting there just like, like kind of go what is happening and, and um no what i really <laughs> enjoy about the scene is that it's like you know we we have been playing two tars this this uh character who's you know part of this more quote unquote backwards culture mm -hmm. where people are being so like regressive and concerning how they treat women but it's like when you look at these women who like are standing on the backs of women's liberation mm -hmm. from the 60s and 70s. Like, the fact that they're able to hold, well, like, they're, you know, they're... office and do all of this shit is, like, is because of women's live of a certain time. They're you know Phyllis, what I'm saying? They're all basically Phyllis Schlafly. Yes, they're, and so... You know, these women who are politically active and yet campaigning against women yeah, being... Yeah, po politically yeah. active, and yet what do they want? Oh, no, 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 see, we want uh, uh, women to have better lives, so how do we advocate for that? Well, it, if we would just go back to Christianity when, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know... The divorce wasn't necessary and da, da, da. it's just like there it's it's like the same regressive shit but cloaked in this idea that it's pr uh, uh, trying to be progressive because they know they can't say the bullshit that they really want to say you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying so they have to act like oh no i just care so much about women and that's why we need well, to push for christianity I mean, and uh they're you know? women and i think they do genuinely believe that they are advocating for women um, it's just cognitive dissonance. It's yeah. there, you know. But but Tutar, you know, is is being very graphic here. And one of the ladies, this was so good. One of the ladies, they're all just kind of staring at it, and then one of the ladies just starts clapping and goes, "Well, thank you for sharing." Ah. Call, her, call her an Uber. Yes. <laughs> uh, and and Tutar, um, Borat comes up and and finds Tutar outside the hotel. And is like, okay, you got to go in for your plastic surgery now. And she says, no. Mm. Um, and the, she's she's had this great awakening. She says, no, I know that women can do anything now. And I'm on Facebook and I've learned everything oh my from Facebook. God. And did you know that the Holocaust didn't happen? I read it on Facebook. Uh. So, and then she rides off in the Uber. So double whammy, not only did he lose his daughter, mm. but he finds out the Holocaust didn't happen. Now we forgot to mention Early on, it's established that Kazakhstan's great national pride is the Holocaust. Yes. <laughs> which, again, apparently the real Kazakhstan has almost no anti-Semitism. So it just felt like that needed to be pointed out. Mm. But, uh, you know, so they, they celebrate Holocaust Remembrance Day to celebrate their oh great... Oh, my Lord. The, the doing that. Um, and so he is thrown for a loop... Uh, yeah, in he's, finding, he's all in disarray, you and, know. And he says he wants to commit suicide, but he can't get a gun, so he's just going to go to the nearest synagogue and wait oh, for man. the next mass shooting. And, I, like, my that was a moment where my mouth was dropped. I was like, what the fuck is about to happen and, next? And this is really, like, that kind of thing is where, um, you know, Sasha Baron Cohen's, uh, you know, obviously a lot of what he has to say is about anti-Semitism. You know, he's, mm -hmm. he's Jewish, and... And his commentary on anti-Semitism, I feel like, has some of the most teeth mm. of anything. Mm. Um, because, yeah, <clears throat> like, we're sitting here watching synagogues and, you know, and mosques and black churches. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously the synagogue is, is what really hits close to home for him. But we're seeing these shootings that basically nothing is being done about. You know, mm. we had Tree of Life a, a couple years ago. And he, um, yeah, it's, it's like, it's this moment played for humor, and yet, that's, that's it, serious. When, that yeah, is... when, when it started, it's such a dark, like, it's such a dark cut, because of, like, yeah. my, like my, I re specifically remember my mouth being open, like, uh, what's gonna happen? And yeah. then you see him walk in with he the- He goes into a synagogue, this is, uh, Temple Cole Emmett, I think, mm -hmm. and- uh, Voice of Truth is, oh, that's actually, I didn't even think about it, is the, is the name of the synagogue Cole Emmett? I think it's Kol Emet, which is Hebrew for voice of truth. And I I didn't even, like, clock that while we were watching the movie. But, yeah, the synagogue he goes to is called Voice of Truth. That's that's what the name means. If it, in fact, is Kol Emet, and I'm not remembering it wrong. 
Um, but he walks in with oh, this like he's got this like long rubber nose and little devil wings. It looks like a mosquito and, like, or some shit. Like yeah, just like the most anti-Semitic costume you could imagine. I think he's got like someone on a puppet string. Yeah, he's got like yeah, it's just hor- and he's walking in going like, "How's this weather we've been controlling?" Yeah, I was like, and, "Oh my god!" Like if I yo, I, this man should have gotten decked in the face. Yeah, and it's and it's these two, it's these two little old ladies yes. just sitting there. And they turn around and look at him, and they come and up to him, and yeah. and one of the ladies who is, we find out, a Holocaust survivor, oh my goodness. she she just starts talking to him, and she's like, you don't need to be afraid of me, and she comes up, and she says, you don't need to be afraid, and look at me, you know, I'm a human, right? And she gives Oh, him, well, before that, he says, uh, the worst thing happened to me that could ever happen to a human being, or a Jew, you know, and, yeah. and you know, he tells him <laughs> and, the problem. Um, and, and she gives him a kiss, and now there's a cut... And there's a hard cut in there between them initially encountering him, and then they're sitting there eating, I think, Kreplach. And mm-hmm. um, and I read that apparently, like, they did tell these ladies what was going on. Mm. Um, apparently, her family, one of the ladies, uh, Judith, um, her family, some of her family is claiming that she wasn't told what was going on and is trying to sue her, is trying to sue Sasha Baron Cohen, and mm. she she passed away. The film's actually what, dedicated to her. What, it's like it's not like she um, looks bad in the scene. yeah no um, <laughs> she, she looks great. So she like she confronts this guy who like clearly looks like an anti-Semitic like guy. Right, yeah. she is just really just so kind and warm and and countering his grotesquery um, by just educating and mm-hmm. and she's really amazing and 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 while well, um, she ends up saying like no the holocaust did happen yeah so she tells because he says something and she says that you know i was in the holocaust and he's like what the holocaust happened and she says yes i saw it and he's like you saw it and then he's like dancing out the door oh my god that the was so funny i was like oh my yeah. lord yeah but <laughs> you know we we can enjoy knowing that these ladies right. knew what was going on <laughs> Just the way it looks as like a scene is just like fuck you, man. Yeah. Um. So I, at that point, he has regained his jaw de vivre, knowing that mm-hmm. the Holocaust happened, and um. And I believe his plan at that point is he's gonna get his daughter back, and he's gonna give her to Rudy Giuliani. Yeah. Um. But. This is right at the beginning of the serious onset of the pandemic at this yes. point. And he's walking around. Why are the streets so empty? This part was chilling. <laughs> yeah, we're just like, oh, right. Oh. <laughs> 2020. Yeah. <laughs> so we had to stop real quick because I haven't had to use the bathroom. And uh, he walks back in with Zoe in tow. <laughs> and I'm just like, what's, what's going on? Why are you just bringing the cute cat in here? And he's just like, you know what? It's on my mind. I'm going to clip the cat's toenails. I well, just keep forgetting. I've been trying to <laughs> trim her nails for days, and I keep forgetting to. And, yeah, she really needs it. They're way too long. So uh, uh, that's happening. So I, I almost <laughs> forgot, but he goes back to the babysitter's house. Yes. Um, right, because she gives him the real, like, you know, the, like, you need to, to love your daughter. Mm-hmm. Um but he goes back and, uh, you know, basically he's asking her about how to find Tudor and she tells him off and says, like, you you know, you are doing wrong by your daughter and you need to love her. And he realizes he does love his daughter. And this was where I mentioned the, the lampshade hanging that was so great because, you know, he clearly has a type. He likes big black ladies. <laughs> and, and he says to her, and it's like, you're you're almost wondering it's like okay are they gonna set this up as she's the new love interest and that yeah. like I feel like that would be kind of cheap yeah and, and no I and I like the and, way they yeah handled and, it with that lamp says, shading yeah and like he's about to leave and then he pops back into her yard I think he's still wearing the anti-Semitic costume at this point no he's not he's oh not. he's not no he turned it but oh he comes in she's wearing a mask at this point like that was like, yes the weird, that's what it is. That's the the weird, um, just seeing that shit happen. Like, oh, this happened in the middle of this, yeah. Yeah, because at first she's just babysitting, whatever. He comes back, she's wearing an N95 (laughs) mask. But, um, but yeah, so he pops back in and he says, will you be my new black wife? And she says, no, I will not be your new black wife. (laughs) And it was like, I was glad that they addressed it. Like, they didn't Mm -hmm. just leave it hanging. Like, obviously she's his type. But also, no, they're not going to just automatically make her his love <laughs> because, interest. Because she is clearly She's, seeing how awful this person is. Yeah. Like, yeah. 
<laughs> and um, oh yeah, and I forget. So yeah, when we first, when he first discovers that the quarantine is happening, he walk, he happens to walk up to this uh, this dude with a long beard outside of a outside of a corner store. Can I just say, so what happened to Borat's wife? Did she get eaten by a bear too? Do all his wives just get eaten by bears? Uh, oh my god, yeah. Because <laughs> like he comes back and like his sons are there and his daughter, but like. And he says something that he wants to see his wife, but then she's just not there. And it's like either the neighbor stole her or just all his wives get eaten by bears. Look, it's you anyway. Know, tragic <laughs> life. So yeah, he he talks to this uh, to this guy. You know, he's telling him, where's everybody? You know, and he says, oh yeah, it's quarantine, it's lockdown, and all that sort of stuff. And he's like, oh, uh, I have nowhere to go. Can I stay with you? And the guy goes like, yeah, sure. And I was like, oh wait, what? <laughs> that was the scene that like this had to have been planned, right? It's like you don't just ask him random. There, <laughs> yeah, there is. Some- um, there is apparently some debate ranging about whether this guy and his friend uh, that, you know, you hear he quarantines with Trump supporters. The two Trump supporters, these two men, um, it's not clear what their relationship is, if they're roommates yeah, or if they're know. just friends who happen to be quarantining together for this period of time. They might be a couple. It's not. I don't think I, they're a couple. There are weird gay <laughs> QAnon Republican yeah, rednecks. Yeah. See that, that that was a specific thing. I was uh, yeah. The, we um, had to mention like yeah. These are like QAnon conspiracy theorists. There weird are ass there are alt right gays. Uh, yeah, yeah. They're yeah. Sad, but you know. The, the, so, the cognitive dissonance is is great between but, lots of people. <laughs> but um, you know, it seems unlikely that paranoid. QAnon believing rednecks would a agree to quarantine since they actually yeah that's what I was thinking go I was to like... an anti mask anti quarantine rally and b that they just let this random foreign guy come and stay with them yeah you know but people are complicated you never know so he goes mm. to stay with these guys and it's like again it's like this weird I think what you notice with a lot of Sasha Baron Cohen's work is a lot of really nice people often have really abhorrent beliefs Mm -hmm. and just because somebody is nice or has good qualities and it is a genuinely like if you're somebody who's like yeah you random stranger on the street like come be safe in my home and even though i don't know you come right that is a genuinely good thing to do but but you know, even so, people can do real harm yeah, pe- out of those beliefs. Yeah, people can see the humanity in a person coming up to them and saying, "Oh, I need some help right now." But when it's like online, and it's like, "Oh, I hear from online that Antifa is the worst thing ever, and they're trying to take down the government." You know what well, I'm saying? And, like and the thing is, the thing with QAnon that is so frustrating, and I've listened to like a few podcasts, like really digging into it. The thing is, is that it is. Um, you know, it's basically a big alternate reality game, except that people mm. take it seriously. Mm. Like, if you have never, if so, for anybody who's not familiar of what an alternate reality game is, sorry, tangent real quick. Uh, so, an alternate reality game is um, like Lonely Girl 15, if anybody remembers that was the start of an alternate reality game. It's basically little clues and breadcrumbs dropped all over the internet and sometimes in real life and in all these like sort of Easter egg places on real platforms and, and across different mediums. And the idea is that people, you know, can sort of interact with these clues and things and put together stuff in real life. Mm. And so if that is something like a soap opera on YouTube, that's really fun. But with QAnon, it's it's got that appeal, except that people take it seriously and they really believe that they're, like, saving children from, you know, from hormone-drinking vampire monsters, uh, yeah, pedophiles. They, they have to torture kids in order for their adrenal glands. And I'm listening, I'm like, what is this right. guy talking about? And it's like, it sucks because it's like, you, you can see these impulses in people where on the one hand, yeah, theoretically wanting to save children that you believe are being trafficked is admirable. But under that, the only reason you believe that in the first place is because of this paranoia because of egotism and thinking you're smarter than everybody else Mm -hmm. 
because of, you know... The protagonist I'm, syndrome where you're like, no, right. if I have it figured out. If it's this thing that other people aren't saying but fits what I want to happen, this has got to be the truth because it's it's just people just aren't willing to listen. Like, yeah. Right, and it, and it kind of reminds me of, um, you know, of those guys that, with the quinceanera in Who is America. It's like, oh, yeah. once you get down to the point of you're saying, I want to save children, well, yeah, who can object to that? You want to save children. But what you think you need to save them from and how you got there is because of all these really harmful and stupid and corrupt beliefs mm. that got you to that point in the first place. And I think it's so funny because it's like, I think I saw a comment that, that was talking about this and it's like, you know, if you want to like be like, oh, exposing the Democratic Party for do doing awful things, it's like, you know, they're like real policies we could be talking about, right. <laughs> you know? Like... like That's the frustrating <laughs> thing too. Or like... There are is actual child trafficking. Child yes. trafficking is an actual problem. Kids, there the, are kids in cages at the border. Right, the kids. <laughs> if you care so much, kids in cages at the border being being tortured. Being, I mean, not like just before anybody comes. I mean, goes. Oh, actually, you know, the kids in cages at the border are being given in inadequate hygiene, food, uh, clothing, blankets. They're, they've got lights on all the time. They're being sleep deprived. It doesn't matter they're if it's catching, a fucking accident. They're catching diseases. <laughs> they're being molested. If you're sitting here worried about pedophiles and child trafficking, those kids are being molested. They're being taken away from their parents. All this shit is going on, and we have actual credible evidence that all this shit is going on. But if the people responsible for that shit are the people that you politically align with it's so much easier to ignore it and make up a weird fucking fairy tale yeah. about you know and like i'm not a fucking fan of the clintons and you know bill clinton was friends with jeffrey epstein i yeah. fully believe bill clinton has gotten up to some shady shit but <laughs> yeah. but they're not fucking trafficking children to harvest their adrenal glands yeah it's just this is so like you know what it is they treat it like these people are super villains and not just like a-holes who are taking advantage of things for, you know, their own probable financial gain, right? Mm -hmm. That's usually what it is. Like, if, if there is chicanery and fuckery going on, you follow the money trail. Not just, ooh, I just want to torture kids just because I want to suck well, their I'm blood out of them. they'll gain immortality. And as people have pointed out, um, as people have pointed out, the QAnon conspiracy is basically an updated version of blood libel which is the conspiracy that Jews um, kill Christian babies of course, to it's always, uh, use Jesus their Christ. blood to make our matzah. Oh, my Lord. What are they? What? Yeah. Like, if you've ever had matzah, I promise you it doesn't have blood in it. Uh, it, is, it is a giant dry cracker. But somehow um, that was a big conspiracy theory in the Middle Ages that Jews... Uh, would kill Christian babies and use their blood to make matzah. And actually, um, there for a very long time, and I think some people still do this, a lot of Jews uh, during Passover will not drink red wine. They'll use white wine because they don't want to risk having a glass of something red on the table during Passover. Hmm. Because of the blood libel, so it doesn't it doesn't surprise me that Sacha Baron Cohen would be particularly uh, interested in exposing the stupidity of the QAnon. Yeah, and I do love how I think one of the scenes ends with them with him like Borat showing him showing the guys the book that he has that's like really aggressive mm -hmm. and like sex and stuff like that, and going like, no, the fact that you believe that like babies are conceived by like the two doctors putting their penises in their mouth, no, that's that's a conspiracy theory, that's nonsense, and it's just like. Oh, oh, is it? Is that is that a conspiracy? Does does Borat need to look a little deeper into yeah. uh, the the things that he consumes? Uh <laughs> I, I, I do really wonder about these guys because they, if these were real people, they were just unaccountably chill about Borat walking around their house with a giant yeah. strap on. There was that point, and I was I, like, they're just not looking I, at him. I don't know. I think I I think they may have either been actors, or I think more likely it was probably like you were saying, kind of a reality show situation mm. where you know they they're probably being themselves and they're not, but but probably somebody approached them off camera and they were like, hey, here's what's going on. There's this weird guy. He wants you know, to do this. Or, yeah, yeah, and and they may have been compensated. I don't know, but um, there was a this joke was like both really stupid and really clever. 
at the same time where so you know borat with his eastern european accent is ordering something on the alexa and he says yeah. they need flashlights so he says alexa buy three flashlights <laughs> <laughs> and alexa sends them three flashlights <laughs> and uh so yeah and it, like so the next day because he finds out the girl, uh, he finds out uh, uh, Suthar had run away and, and they see her online. She has instantly become a sort of anchor for a an Alex Jones type. I mean, uh, I can kind of see it because those guys are just YouTube grifters who are probably just picking up any pretty mm-hmm. blonde chick to yeah. uh, be their mouthpiece. Yeah. So, <laughs> Let's be real. So she is, she is working for this Alex Jones type sort of like far right conspiracy type. Uh, quote unquote news show, and and he finds out she's going to be speaking at this anti mask, anti quarantine rally. So they go there the next day, and this was like this was one of the scenes that was making me anxious for the safety of Sasha oh Baron God, Cohen yeah. and the actress playing his daughter because they're just there maskless around a bunch of other people who are not wearing masks, yeah. not following any kind of social distancing protocol. And I'm just watching this like you guys are angry. Machine guns. These motherfuckers have machine guns at the ready. Don't tell me what mask I can or can't wear. Burr, 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 burr. And I'm like, motherfuckers are getting beat up by the cops right now. Like, this is what you're angry about? I don't want to wear a mask. Because like, that's what affects it. I mean, ugh. I think I saw such a poetic uh, image where somebody had like a BLM protester with a sign that said something like stop killing us mm. next to some fucking Karen wearing a, like with a sign that said, I want a haircut. Yeah. And, and the thing is, it's like, you think it's a joke, but like that happened. I specifically remember because when lockdown first happened, like, you know, that was a photograph. Like, yeah. That yeah. really was. <laughs> and, but it's so crazy to think like that was because at first when the lockdown first happened and it was just like it just started the first thing that happened was all of these like people came out of nowhere complaining like oh we want them to open back up and then as soon as you look into like the articles talking about it it would be like oh yeah uh, some Betsy DeVos funded group uh, was like hiring people to like push people to go to these different things and it's like oh so this is being astroturf this is all bullshit but it was just so funny to see like the first thing it's like you guys are trying to be legit and your complaint is I want a haircut it's like that's the best yeah. you could do to try to like and, and in your game. Unfortunately, there are really people who think that it's a huge impingement on their freedoms mm. to tell people to socially distance and wear masks. And but it's, it's those people astroturfing. Yeah, it, how it, big that argument is to what, make it seem like it's that's yeah. what got the ball rolling. That's mm-hmm. what put that in people's heads. I think, um, and it's yeah, it's it's incredibly frustrating. There was this thing going around saying. Oh, if you uh, if you snitch on people who break quarantine, you'd snitch on Anne Frank and, oh, and Harriet Tubman. Oh, that's And it was like, insulting. so fleeing slavery or hiding from the Nazis <laughs> is not the fucking same thing as saying, hey, please stay in your house so you don't catch a deadly disease or give a deadly disease to anybody says, for a couple weeks. Like, yeah. people are trying for you to not die. Harriet Tubman belonged to people <laughs> who would have probably killed her. And Frank was hiding from people who wanted to kill her. But you, the quarantine is trying to make you not die. It's the opposite. It's the cognitive dissonance because all you have to do is extrapolate the idea of people are making me do something I don't want to do. This is exactly the same like when Anne Frank, you know, it's like yeah. it's so oh not looking God. at any of the factors. Yeah. It yeah. Is, uh, uh, but yeah, yeah. So then anyway, they're at this infuriating rally. Um, Borat comes disguised as a what is he? He's like country Steve. Country Steve, yeah. And he, remi- he was like very much like straight Dave, and he gets <laughs> up and sings this uh, song that he wrote with the guys he was quarantining with. Yeah, um, and it's like inject them with the uh, it's something. Oh, Jack, oh, inject Obama with the Wuhan flu. That's right. It's like the cor- the the. Um, yeah, the, the chorus, the, the sort of refrain is inject him with the Wuhan flu. But then also there's all these things about how it's fake and it's not real and it's a hoax. It's yeah. like, so yeah, fuck those people. Inject them with the Wuhan flu. Except it's not even real. Yeah, it, It's it, not really a disease, but inject these people I hate with it. It's just like, you don't have an actual like moral compass that decides why this uh, you want this right, and why you just, don't want it's this. Just it's just, oh, they don't all. like that and they're being sensitive by me saying it. Well, I'm going to say it. And it's like, it's but just, you don't know actually have a cognitive yeah. reason why you do it you're just doing it to it's, like uh, it's like that key and peel sketch where um 
Obama's talking to all the congressional Republicans and just saying the opposite of whatever he wants so that they, <laughs> the, and like basically being Bugs Bunny. Right, right. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, there's yeah. one line where he says, uh, he's trying to get a call and response. He usually does this in his movies, you know. And he's like, inject them with the Wu-Tan flu and chop them up like the Saudis do. And he's yeah. like, oh, what should we do with the journalists? Inject them with the Wuhan flu. And they said, no, chop them up like the Saudis do. And I just love, like, that point of that happening, right? Because it's like, you know, how these people are just as blindly hateful as the Arabs that they, are, like, think are blindly hateful towards them. So that's why we have to attack them first, because those people are just hateful, bloodthirsty, you know, monsters. So because they're heartless monsters, it's okay for us to dehumanize them, because they're not human anyways, right? So that's why it's okay for us to kill them first, because because they're the bloodthirsty monsters. Yeah. You know, it's like this so, like, you just circular logic your way into being like, and that's why it's okay that they're dehumanized, because they're dehumanizing us, so we have to do it first. It's like, Huh? So Tutar is there covering uh, the story, but while he's on stage, the two guys that he was staying with talk to Tutar and say, look, your father really wants your help. He's going to get executed if you don't help him. And so she tells them, tell him, I don't want to see him right now, but I'll help. Uh, and and that kind of is the big... Um, that leads into the Rudy Giuliani scene. That re scene. leads into the, the climax with Rudy Giuliani. Oh, my God. So just because, you know... For the sake of getting the facts in order, first of mm. all, the, and, and I will say I'm getting a lot of this from, um, there was a really good Slate article that broke this scene down shot for shot. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, the way this scene is shot, uh, pretty much all of the external scenes and the scene in the lobby uh, that are intercut with the scene in the hotel room are from different parts of the world. There's yeah. even a part of the shot in like Romania or yeah. something. Yeah, but I mean, um, you know. And that's fine. That's standard filmmaking. And again, this is essentially a fictional movie, so I yeah. don't mean to say that Sasha Baron Cohen's being disingenuous or anything here. But just, again, for the sake of just getting the facts mm -hmm. straight, um, what I've seen a lot of is Rudy Giuliani put his hand down in his pants with a girl that he thought was 15. There's no reason to think that he thought she was 15. Right. Um, again, the actress is 24, the character is 15, but... In this instance, she's she's, be, she's she's interviewing she's him. She's interviewing yeah. him. She she looks like she's her age. She looks like she's in her mid twenties. She's coming to him in the guise of a professional journalist. He has no reason to think she's a child. So, on that point, just to be clear, he doesn't think she's fifteen. Yeah. yeah. Um, she could be creepy and not and that not be related right. directly and to what's again, happening. And <laughs> again, I'm not saying that to defend him. I'm just saying that so that if anybody comes and goes, oh, this is all just a hack job and he didn't do mm -hmm. anything wrong. No, because what happens is she is um, being pretty unprofessional in a way that should have clued him in. Like she's talking about, oh, I just can't wait to feel like Princess Melania and like right. touching his knee all the time and giggling. Um, and to be fair, like he puts his a hand on our way lower back at a certain oh, point. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. And again, not say he's not being creepy, um, but just saying she is behaving in such a way that he should have been clued into the fact that she was not a serious journalist. Mm, oh, I get what um, you're saying. But at this point, Borat has had this change of heart. I think it's because he found the pooped baby that she dressed up as him. Ah, uh, yeah. She, oh, no, I think he, someone gives it to him. Doesn't the, uh, the black woman give him the baby? And he sees it, and he's like, oh, wow. Oh, yeah, she, she, she gave me. it to him back then, and, and he's got the baby, and he's like, okay, I have to save my daughter. Mm -hmm. I can't let this happen. Right, I might have gotten the sequence of events wrong. Um, so he's going to try and save her, and he we see him running, and he's in a disguise. Well, he tries to go in at first. They won't let him in, so he puts oh, on yeah. a disguise, and he's running, 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 and, and he comes in disguised as a sound guy and trying to say, like, oh, mm -hmm. I think we have to call the interview off. The sound's not working. And she's like, no, it is working. And um, and they they end up. Uh, she pulls him aside, and he's like, "You don't have to do this. I love you. I don't want you to to do this." Um, and she's like, "Look, I love you. I don't want you to be executed. I'm. You can't stop me. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna seduce him." And so he leaves, and she um, goes into the bedroom with him. Again, this scene, like, if you want, look on Slate.com if you want to see a really detailed, like, shot by shot breakdown. Um, but essentially, he's, you know, he's, like, patting her lower back. He's fiddling with her dress or her mic or something. Mm. He sits on the bed. 
He leans back and he puts his hand down his pants. I don't care if he was tucking in his shirt. He leans back on the bed and he sticks his hand down his pants. Yeah, and it's like, <laughs> I, it's, like there's no two ways about that. And it's r- like, it's tangentially related to because the way they cut it is like there's a mic that he needs to get out or something like that. But it's like, yeah, why would that be down your pants? Right. Though? Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, he can find whatever way, but like, no, there was not a reason he needed to do that. It was clearly inappropriate. And just as he's doing that, Borat busts in wearing, like, a mesh bikini. Yeah. Saying, like, take me instead. My anus is tight. Take yeah. me instead. You can have... And, of course, Giuliani freaks out and leaves. He's like, whoa. While Borat and Tutar, father and daughter, chase him out, begging... Both, both of, them of them begging. Both of them them. begging him to fuck them. Like, ah. no, my hole is better. No, my anus is better. My hole, my oh hole, my, my hole. God. It's, but um, it's just specifically the fact, like, you see him go, oop. Like, he no does, one says oop when they're not about right, to do when something. when they're not doing up. something wrong. Yeah, he goes oop. Right, <laughs> um, and so so they're doing this. And then we cut to them running down the street. I think we hear sirens. Yeah, I hear sirens at one point. Um, and I was like, oh, shit. Oh, which, someone. again, you know, that could just be editing. But, yeah. but the effect is they're running down the street. And they end up in an alley. And they have a touching father-daughter moment where they're like, you know what? We're going to go back to Kazakhstan together. We're going to face the music. And they mm. hug. And then... Earlier, we saw her stick literal balloons into her dress to make her boobs look bigger, and we hear a balloon pop while she's like, uh, yeah. So, um, and then we get the denouement. Yeah, yeah. We we go back. You know, they're gonna face the music, and they, they go to the one guy they're in Kazakhstan. The... They're talking to the premier of Kazakhstan in his yeah. shitty little warehouse office, and he goes, "Oh, you didn't do it? Okay, that's fine. You know, people make mistakes." And they're like, "Wait." Huh? Everything's fine? And, and then, <laughs> so they notice um, that he's got these very obvious out-in-the-open plans on the right. wall for creating a virus and sending it around the world as revenge for all the other countries laughing at Kazakhstan. Yes. And so that's why he's not mad. He achieved what he meant to achieve, and right. Borat flashes back on them, giving him, like, you know, supposedly giving him vaccines before mm-hmm. he travels and they're actually injecting him with bat juice and uh <laughs> then the, it does a montage of him like really quickly going around the world coughing on ducks and you know chinese wet markets yes and there's one part where he talks to tom hanks yes he's in <laughs> australia like, and like getting an autograph from tom <laughs> hanks and coughing on him i was like when that motherfucker actually got it though didn't he yeah he like, did oh. he did that's why tom hanks got covid in australia oh wait so was he there did Sasha Baron know it? I mean, what, that part what looked... Was filmed? Well, that part looked green screen. <laughs> yeah, it was very but, clearly green screen. Yeah. But, like, did, did Tom... I think Tom Hanks had recovered, and he was like, yeah, sure, I'll poke fun at it. You know? Okay, so he it, this was afterwards? Because that's what I'm trying to yeah, get the yeah, timeline. No, no, this was I thought like, it was like, oh, no. we're just going to pick a random celebrity to fuck with, no, and then no, no, he no, happened no. to get no, it. No, this was like a reference to Tom Hanks. Okay. Because specifically, <laughs> because specifically, it was in Australia, and this was a reference to Tom Hanks getting covid in Australia. Oh, okay. I was wondering why, because the background CG like looked this, so it, obviously it like, fake. It was just like was the like fucking... the Sydney Opera House. Yeah, like, oh yeah, he's just hanging out in front of the Sydney Opera yeah, House. Yeah, no, that was, that was a reference. <laughs> yeah. And so they, they figure this out, and they run out into the hall to confront him and get him to confess, and then it turns out that they've been recording and transmitting it on the smartphone. Right. And they call back, and the guy who worked at the phone store is listening in. Yeah. Yeah, that, it, that that's a good way to you know the, the 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 usual sort of like espionage. We recorded you doing this, so now yeah. you have to. Yeah, yeah, and, I love it. And they blackmail him. They say, "So what do you want if we keep our mouths shut?" Which you know, there's a little bit of a fourth wall moment that obviously they didn't. But mm-hmm. um, and then they basically they give their demands and cut to. The afterword where Kazakhstan is now a feminist country. Yes, right uh, next to United States and Saudi Arabia. Yeah, <laughs> and um, and so now they export grooms instead of brides, and they have a wagon full of little boys in tuxedos oh. being shipped to Kevin Space. Yes. Oh, I thought their point was that I thought they were saying that like, oh, child brides is sexist, so now we do child brides exactly. and child grooms. No, only only the well. I oh, I thought the point the was that. 
I thought they were saying, like, to be fair, now we're doing well, both genders. I think they were trying to make up for them, but yeah, they're, yeah. Just, they're shipping a bunch of little boys to Kevin's Oh, family. my God. And so Tutar uh, is now a... Tutar is now a uh, a professional journalist. That's right. And she has a little gray suit, and mm. she's got this sort of looks like good in it too. she looks good, and she's got this like '90s girl like haircut, this right. '90s tough girl haircut mm-hmm. that's sort of like weirdly clinging to her head shape. Yeah. And yeah. Oh, she goes like uh, she says, uh, "I am now number four journalist in Kazakhstan. Who number three? And you know it shows the real words like, "Oh, that's awesome." And she goes. Very nice. And he goes, no, you say it's not eyes. And she goes, don't mansplain to me. Yeah. And he goes, Psh, feminist. Yeah. <laughs> that was a great moment. And then, so they have, the the finale is that they have replaced the running of the Jew with the running of the American. Oh, my God. And I like I almost don't even want to give away how that looks because it's know just what? so hilarious. You know what? I mean, I would hope that anybody listening to this has seen the movie. Because <laughs> if not, we just told you the entire plot. Yeah. But. You know what? Yeah, let's just leave it. We, let's just leave it. We don't have to describe it, but let's this just say beautiful. it's oh. great. It's beautiful. It's a wonderful, like, um, answering reversal of, like, the uncomfortableness of, like, oh, you're showing these people over here as being, like, you know, th- this uh, insensitive stereotype. And then it's just, like, it flips it on its head yeah. <laughs> and shows and the opposite. So, overall, I mean, this was, it's weird because I, I'm almost having trouble processing it still because... It, it came as such a surprise and yeah. such a shock that I wasn't anticipating such this. Such a shock to the system I, of what yeah, was I wasn't, happening. I yeah. wasn't really like anticipating this for any significant length of time. And it just plopped in out of nowhere. And there's Borat, 14 years older, and okay. all this stuff. And I will say, Tutar is so much prettier than his companion in Borat 1. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, yeah, like the the satire is just as sharp as ever but it's one of those things where it's just like i'm not sure if it's because this is sharp or shit today is just so I, dumb he's just like sharper. taking the shit out of it you I know what i mean sharper i think it's i think it is um it's it's tighter it is tighter mm. and um more focused and actually even you know it's more i think a little bit more clear as good as borat one was i think this one was like a little bit more sophisticated. It wasn't groundbreaking. No, you're right in it being sophisticated because, like, it really does take you to another level with how it treats the Tutar character. Mm-hmm. Like, I wasn't expecting there to be this sort of, like, deeper feminist commentary right, going on. Right, because, like, in Borat 1, the joke is just him being sexist and people reacting to that. Yeah. Yeah, no, there was there was a lot to it, and I think the um, the overall plot was, uh, was a bit more, you know, meaningful. I mean, granted... Mm the you know coronavirus happening gave him that plot yeah. but you know the that that plot being what's going on now uh was a bit more meaningful than him simply chasing pamela anderson because yeah, he yeah. thinks she's hot um, um and i will yeah. say I, I love uh how at the end it has that little bit where you know you know kazakhstan get finally gets internet zoe <laughs> oh yeah and then yeah i'm sorry zoe's messing around and i'm so afraid she's, she's going gonna... to hit a key that's gonna mess up something. Zoe, come Zoe, here. Zoe, get out of the way. <laughs> All right. Uh, Damn it, Zoe. <laughs> okay, it's still recording, so everything's they okay. Have, they have Kazakhstan influencing American elections. And yes. they show them, like, they show them trolling on Twitter and, like, this little, like, Eastern European girl sitting there as a black so, man. Yeah, speaking as a black man, I love Trump. And oh my God, did you see that uh, fake account that was, like, it was, like, a couple of, like, it was, like, a week or so before I saw this movie. So it, this was fresh in my mind. But there was this fake account that was, uh, that was like, you know, MAGA 2020, and as a black man, I'm, you know, voting for Trump. And this motherfucker who made this fake account was so lazy. For the profile picture, they just did, like, the screen cap of, like, black man that they found online. And you knew it was just a screen cap of a black man. Because if you look at the top of the picture, you could see the words, black man picture. Like, oh my God. where they could just, like, they just searched they just it on searched their phone and just screen capped it. Yeah. Oh my God. And so it's just like, wow, like, damn, you motherfuckers, like so exposed to like shit man and it's so funny like you think these espionage motherfuckers are trying to like ruin you think it's some sophisticated thing it's like no not really (laughs) you know but yeah that is oh my god that is Borat. Borat 2. The, the way they ended this movie, it was just the icing on the table. Because they fade out on it, too. And it's just the, the, you know, the parody of America. Like, the running of the Americans or something like that. And yeah. I was just like, ooh, ooh, yeah, no. Yeah. No, that shit and, hurt. And, you know, I mean, obviously we were going to watch this for the podcast, but 
even so, and I, you know, I haven't been doing any of that early access with the movies or whatever, paying the movie theater price. I, I you know, mm. I wait for it to be rentable, but this is absolutely worth paying yeah. the $20 or whatever it is. Honestly, it, it, yeah. It is worth it. yeah. <laughs> like, this is something you want to watch now because God knows how it's going to land in six months. Right. <laughs> I mean, who you know? knows what's going to fucking happen? Like, God knows. <laughs> so just watch it now and get, you know, watch it now and get that little bit of, oh, well, you can. Yeah, that little, oh, yes. You you get it, Sasha. You get it. You get what's uh, going on. It really is, like, it's, like, we're in an era of such low-hanging fruit comedy, but it's being orchestrated, like, comedically in this film by someone who is so genius. He mm-hmm. still makes it work. Like, he could just, go like, make it, like, the weakest joke as possible, but it hits you so well it's, with how he sets he, up things. He you is know? so the opposite of lazy with yeah. this. It is the opposite of lazy. He does a fantastic job. And now we have been um, introduced to a delightful new actress. Yeah. Uh, Marina something, I think. Um, but yeah, so new new discovery. Yeah, hope she does uh, more things because she was really, really great in she this. She was yeah. really funny. I thought she was from Second City or something before I looked her up. Yeah, I was like, I could have um, swore she was in something. And like, she, like I, said, I think it's just like she was so good. It was just like, this person has to have been in something else. Yeah. And the disguises are really fun. You can see a lot of that carryover from Who is America mm-hmm. with the really sophisticated disguises. Uh, yeah. And just, yeah, it was, uh, and of course the camera, the, the, the actual film looks um, looks somewhat better because it's 14 years later. It's yeah. really, really worth watching. I mean, really I don't, is. in a way, I don't even want to compare it to Borat 1 because they're two... They're you know, doing two different things. Right, yeah. they're doing two different things. Borat 1 was something that was unique. It was something that had never been done before, really. Um, and it was, it was just absolutely a game changer. This is not so much, you know, a game changer doing something completely new and unique, but it is just, it's just taking everything up a notch. It's Enhancing really what it. the original yeah. formula is. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Really, it's really good. Uh, and as you can hear, probably, uh, Zoe was just meowing. <laughs> she's, she's sitting there glaring. Yeah, she's telling us to wrap this up. <laughs> I got a shit. So, uh, thank you for uh, joining us for this episode. This has been the Review a New Podcast. Thank you especially to all the patrons and Kofi donations that keep us uh, doing this show. Your support is appreciated beyond words. And if you'd like to donate, go to our Review a New Patreon, uh, available at the link below wherever this episode is posted. For only $5, you get to hear every episode of our show, not just the odd-numbered ones. So, damn it, Zoe. <laughs> so, get with it, act like you want it. And until next time, this has been the Review a New Podcast. I'm DJ. I'm Evan. And as the ending of the movie says, now vote or you will be executed. <laughs> I said, no, bitch, or I fucking kill you. Vote or die, motherfucker, motherfucker, vote or die. You can't run from a 38, go ahead and try. Let your opinion be heard, you gotta make a choice. Cause after I slit your throat, you won't have a fucking voice. Vote or die. Vote or die. Okay.